gulls get a bad rap from some of their human neighbours, fuelled by elements of the media. They're unpopular with some bird watchers too, perhaps in part because of the identification challenges they pose. Here we'll look at the two silver grey backed gulls that form a great starting point for identifying gulls in northwest Europe common and herring gulls. We'll also offer some tips for helping you get to grips with this fascinating, versatile and varied bird family. How many gull species can you see in this clip? At the end of this video we'll discuss which species featured. Studying lineups like this one is a great way to improve your gull ID. Find a spot where gulls are loafing and you can view without disturbing them. Fields near food sources such as landfill sites can be good, as can recently ploughed fields. Nature reserves with lagoons often attract concentrations of gulls and have the added advantage of hides you can view from. Large water bodies and estuaries may hold gull roosts, however, Viewing is often difficult because of the large numbers of tightly packed birds and the fading light. The birds can be quite distant too. Once you've found a good location, the other important considerations are the light and wind direction. Although bright sunlight might seem best, strong light can make it hard to judge subtle differences in plumage tone, so overcast conditions do tend to work better. If it is sunny, try to get the light behind you. As for wind direction, gulls usually face into the wind, particularly when it's strong. Ideally then, you will have the wind coming from your left or right, not from behind you or into your face. So you're set up for some gull watching. Let's look at those two good reference species, common and herring gulls. Despite the name, common gull is usually outnumbered by black-headed herring and even lesser black-backed gull in many parts of the UK. Only around their upland breeding grounds are common gulls the most commonly seen gull, so don't be misled by the name. Common gulls are slightly larger than black-headed gulls and considerably smaller than nearly all herring gulls. Their upper wings are mid-grey, noticeably darker than black-headed gull and the race of herring gull that breeds in the UK. Where size and plumage tone can't be directly compared with other species, look for a rather round-headed, benign-faced gull which has an all-dark eye at all ages. Adult birds have yellow-green legs and a yellowish bill. Like most gulls, bare part coloration, that's the colour of the legs and bill, should be used with caution as it changes with age and the stage of the breeding cycle. Young common gulls have pink legs and a pink-based bill with a black tip, and adults and second winter birds often show a black ring round the beak, this can prompt confusion with ring-billed gull, a rare visitor from North America, but it's quite normal for common gull too, particularly in winter. In breeding plumage, common gulls have an all-white head. Outside the breeding season, they show a variable amount of grey-brown streaking on the head. This can sometimes give a hooded impression, especially when birds are hunched up or flying. Concentrate on structure of gulls in flight. Common gulls have slightly more rounded wingtips than black-headed gull and look sleeker than herring gull, with slimmer wings and bodies. Herring gulls are the classic gulls of seaside towns. However, they're equally at home far from the coast and breed on rooftops in an increasing number of towns and cities, with numbers swelled in winter by birds from the continent. They are large, often rather brutish looking gulls and usually appear heavy keeled in flight. Their fairly deep bills often show a conspicuous angle on the lower mandible, and older birds have a pale iris, making them look meaner-faced than common gull. Herring gulls progress through several plumage stages during the five years it takes for them to reach adulthood, so it's worth getting familiar with their overall shape and structure, as this is reasonably consistent. Adult birds have pale silver-grey upper wings, between common gull and black-headed gull in tone. Birds in breeding plumage have a clean white head. Like common gull, their heads have a variable amount of brown streaking during winter. Adults have a bright yellow bill with a prominent red spot on the lower mandible, and almost invariably show pink legs. Younger birds are also pink-legged, 
but this applies to the immatures of most large gull species, so doesn't help with the ID. Bill colour and pattern varies with age, usually starting off all black, developing a pink base, then becoming yellow in the fourth year. During this transition, a black ring can be present, again causing confusion potential with ring-billed gull. Let's review the clip from the start of the video and see how many species of gull were present. On the far left are three herring gulls. The bird on the extreme left is a third or possibly fourth winter, with the pale grey back of an adult but a blackish mark on the bill and a few brown feathers in the wing. Alongside it are two first winter herring gulls with all black bills and brownish plumage. In the middle of the frame are two second winter common gulls with mid grey backs, greyish green, black tipped beaks and lots of brown head streaking. These are surrounded by an assortment of black headed gulls. The smart blackish backed large gull right of centre is an adult lesser black backed gull. And then an adult common gull still with some traces of winter plumage on its head and bill, drops in to complete the picture.